All right, good morning, Coastal Bend. I'm meteorologist Carly Smith. We've got some tropical thoughts. There's dangerous surf and a rip current risk for the East Coast. We are looking at tropical storm force winds for the Bahamas and the center of the storm is still forecast to miss the East Coast, but there still could be some impacts. And so here is the latest Hurricane Aaron forecast wind field. And so as you see now with the latest update a little bit more to the west as of 10 a.m., the Outer Banks now could see some tropical storm force winds and additionally remember a lot this storm of course when it comes to a forecast cone uh, as the storm weakens the the width of the radius of the, the wind the tropical storm force winds or the hurricane force winds tends to expand as the storm weakens. It tends to get tighter as the storm strengthens. But with that being said, tropical storm force winds are now in the forecast for the outer banks. But additionally, if the center of the storm were to shift to where it is on the western edge of this forecast cone, then there would be a lot more of North Carolina potentially right along the coast more so not like all the way to Raleigh, but a fairly decent amount of the North Carolina coast could be under the tropical storm wind radii field. So that's something to keep in mind. North Carolina should still keep a very close eye on the storm, not to mention the rip current risk still going to be on the high side, the intense side of the storm. So here's the latest look uh, at Hurricane Aaron. You can see it is looking much more organized this morning as the eye is becoming more defined again. And then it's weakening again. So there was kind of a eye wall recycle or replacement cycle that went on through first edition, which is now four hours long, by the way. So from 5 to 9 a.m., we saw that eye wall tightening. Now it's kind of losing a little bit of organization, but it's going to re probably reorganize as well. As the eye wall is doing new organization, it does shift a little. So this storm moving a little bit more west right now and closer than comfort uh, would one allow for areas of the Turks and Caicos. So that's something to keep in mind is as the eye wall kind of recenters itself or redevelops essentially, it can wobble and that's what makes forecasting hurricanes so difficult. This storm is moving west-northwest currently at 10 miles per hour. It is stronger than it was at the last update at 7 a.m. We now have 140 mile per hour winds. I don't know why the mic is popping, but uh, why it's nowhere near Corpus. This is just because we are interested in the tropics and people sometimes travel as well. And we are in a hurricane prone area, so it's good to take a look at what is going on across the entire tropics because this does paint and tell the story of, of the tropical season where we're seeing energy being taken with these storms. The purpose of a hurricane is to take warm air from the tropics and distribute it to the north. And if we get more strong hurricanes to do this without having a big impact on land, that's huge. Um, and it could potentially limit development closer to home. So there's a lot of reasons why we focus on hurricanes, but this is also just a talker and our weather is nice and sunny today. And so we're discussing the tropical updates as they happen and they always come out at 10 a.m. So throughout the peak of hurricane season, I will try to come on at 10 a.m. with the latest update 
from the National Hurricane Center, no matter how big or far away the update is from Corpus Christi. So that is my spill there, Richard. Uh, as we take a look at Hurricane Aaron, the forecast cone does go north. It does stay away from Corpus. So no fear there of a storm coming our way. Uh, but it is expected to be a strong category two and something else I want to emphasize while this storm is not in Corpus and while we're not going to see wave impacts or any impacts from this storm. This is an important time to just remind everyone that a storm can create very dangerous rip current risks well away from the center of this storm. So this storm not expected to have a direct landfall impact on the east coast, but rip currents, coastal erosion, coastal flooding all going to be a impact for areas not getting a direct landfall or getting direct impacts from the storm. The center is expected to stay off the east coast, but huge impacts on the beach when it comes to waves, when it comes to coastal erosion, when it comes to coastal flooding, and additionally when it comes to rip currents. You could be having a vacation on the beach the water, the hurricane far away from you, you're not even getting strong wind, but what you are going to get are really strong rip currents that can take you out to sea a lot quicker than you're ready for. And this storm does have really big wave action. Even as it turns north, we're still looking at 40 plus foot swells at the center of this storm. And that's going to continue to move north again. I don't totally know why the mic is popping, so I hope everyone apologize or I apologize for that. I hope it's not too bad, but I do hear it on my end as well. Um, Diana says glad to hear. Thank you uh, for your comment there, Diana. So I believe that's yes. Uh, anyway, the storm is going to potentially you see as it shifts a little bit more west, a little bit closer to uh, the Outer Banks. We are seeing the chance for even some 20 foot waves in that region of North Carolina, which is huge and so dangerous. Then the storm continuing to produce big waves and big swells across the East Coast. There will continue to be rip current risk even as the storm moves away because the the swell period will continue to stay long well into the weekend and likely into next week and there is a second storm that may follow this swell that we're looking at now again i don't know what's up with the mic this swell that we're looking at now is actually from what may follow uh hurricane aaron and that is our next chance of tropical development it's our next tropical wave you could see the the wave forecast not nearly as intense as aaron but still is falling in the similar path and with Aaron taking so much energy with it cat five is huge it's going to be a big energy grabber and it's going to kind of try to stabilize this path that it's going on if this tropical storm follows in the same path it likely will not be able to strengthen to the same level that Aaron has just because Aaron is taking a lot of that energy and heat and warmth with it to the north so uh, over the next seven days, I'm just going to end this after this update because the mic is popping so bad and it is not wiggling or anything um, there on my clothing. My hair is not hitting it either, so I don't know what's going on. But the big picture is no threats to the Gulf. I don't think the tropical wave will be a threat to the Gulf, but the Caribbean islands, the Leeward Islands, and again, the East Coast should keep paying attention to the next storm on top of Hurricane Aaron. That's going to do it for this live update. We do have a chance of rain in the coastal bend as we head into the week ahead. That will not be tropical in nature. It is going to come from the northeast and move southwest into our area. Additionally, sea breeze, which does bring tropical Gulf moisture in, uh, may help uh, allow some storms to develop into the afternoon and evening as well. But yeah, nothing to worry about here in South Texas when it comes to the tropics at this point in time. But of course, this is peak tropical season. We've had some of our worst storms in August. So it's important to go on and talk about the storms that are out there and let people know if they aren't coming here. That's just as important as letting them know that they are coming here. I'm meteorologist Carly Smith signing off. Thank you so much for watching.